Welcome back to the next iteration of the hookah diving air compressor setup. Since I posted my last video, it hasn't actually been too long here. Um, I got to thinking about a few things and I have taken this thing out for a test run between now and then. It doesn't seem to be producing air. Um, it, it does make some air, but it's not getting up to the type of pressure I want to see. So there's something wrong. And, and one of the things, this is why I put this in for the video, this is the little mast I have. So you get your engine running down here, make an exhaust, and this just goes up to some fresh air, has the intake. This is actually the exact little air filter intake that came with the air compressor. Um, so this sits on this little pipe here. Like I said, you kind of came in halfway through this project, so we won't see everything that's happened in the past, but going forwards, this is what's going on. This is a quick connect, so it basically just plugs in to that. And I noticed that when I unplugged this, there were some brass shavings. So did those brass shavings get sucked into the intake and score all the cylinder walls and mess it all up? Or did some of that get stuck under the reed valves and I can just clean it out and this will work perfectly? I don't know, but as a learning experience for your intake, it's probably best to just have this rubber like you know hose clamped on and don't put a quick connect here because well all the brass shavings but we'll, we'll see so in this video we're actually going to see what's going on inside this uh have a look at how it actually works are there actually reed valves i don't I'm, I'm telling you there are but what's in here we'll find out um and also there's some thoughts so uh mohammed the gold fiddler posed a really interesting question he said why not just a generator and the compressor as it was? Like I showed you guys, I don't know if this is in the frame, but this little air compressor back here, I'm like, well, this thing works. That air compressor will run off of my Jackery, which I've got right here. So this is fairly lightweight and it's 500 watt hours. That little air compressor pulls 250 watts, which means that this will run for two straight hours. And I've tested that air compressor, not underwater. The deeper you go, the more each breath takes for air. But just in the backyard, that air compressor will just barely keep up with me. But it's, it runs constantly, it never takes a break. And so two hours runtime with that air compressor. Will it supply air if I go deeper? Like you know, six, seven feet underwater, I'm sure it'll be fine. You start getting much deeper, it's probably gonna struggle. But that would be my solution that's packable, something you can carry in places. And I, the thing I have against a compressor, sorry, um, the thing I have against a generator, two things. One, I don't own one and it, it would cost money. Um, and two, it weighs a fair bit. So the type of generator I would buy is probably one of those, you know, EU 2000 or 2200 watt, like the little inverter quiet ones. Um, and they weigh about 45 pounds and that's a decent amount of weight. So I was thinking if Keen Engineering on their website has an air compressor motor combination that weighs about 20 pounds, well, great, 20 pounds, it, it powers itself. You just have a little gas in there and off to the races. But Things that I'm learning is that in Canada, it's very cold and so you have a fairly thick wetsuit and you're gonna be wearing a lot of lead weight. So it's not like the differences between just a wetsuit, snorkel and a mask and your snuffer bottle. I mean, you can just hike, hike, you know, a kilometer or two into a creek, up and down a creek, put on your wetsuit. You could hike in your wetsuit if you wanted to, but it's pretty light and a snorkel, it's like a cool piece of technology. You can see underwater, you can breathe nice and easy so long as you're up at the surface. Super light, super easy to do. Then you get into this hookah diving stuff and you gotta pack, even if it is a lightweight, like you, even if you don't have to carry that compressor with you, <laughs> that generator with you, um, carrying just the compressor and an engine, even if it's 20 pounds, you also have to carry like 50 or 60 pounds of lead. So I'm, I'm not sure, is it worth packing all this stuff in? Is it worth trying to reduce the weight of this versus, well, if it's gonna be a big heavy thing, you just have the, a generator and maybe you just stay closer to the car. 
The other thing I don't know and I want to learn more about, so you can either give me your experience in the comments uh, or, or email me your more detailed stories if there isn't room down there, but is it worth having something like this? Because you can cover a lot of ground. You can, you can float, you know, say a hundred meters of creek just with a snorkel and mask and see where the bedrock is, where the bedrock is. Whereas with something like this, you set it up, you're sort of stuck in that spot and you go down to the bedrock, you look at the two cracks that are actually, you know, exposed and not under a ton of gravel. And then you got to move and you got to carry everything off to the next spot. So it really does slow you down. Is the benefit of being able to go deep and really see those, those cracks down, you know, in the deeper places, is that worth the fact that you're going to cover a lot less ground doing it? Or do you cover a lot less ground? I don't know these things. I need to learn. But for now, I want to see if I can make this thing actually work because it, it's not working. It's not compressing air. So I've got my tools out ahead of time at least. And I have cracked, cracked these loose. So I should be able to get these things open. Oh, that one's still tight. Oh, oh yeah, that's quite tight. Um, so yeah, basically we're going to have a look to see what's going wrong inside of this thing so that, you know, we know and we'll get a close up of what's going on in the air compressor and then how valuable is it, speed things up here, oh, that's not magnetic, um, how valuable is it to actually have the hookah system considering even if this is super lightweight, I still have to carry like 60 pounds of lead plus the hose, plus the tank. Like it's, it's extra trips, possibly multiple extra trips as opposed to just a snorkel and a mask. Okay. So that pops out. You may have noticed I've been trying to do like a Thursday video every Thursday. This might just be a early installment because it's not you know, a properly organized video where I put the effort in like some of the other ones next Thursday. So let's say I put this out on Tuesday or I don't know when this comes out, but if I put this out ahead of time, next Thursday is not a gold mining video. It's where I build this wooden platform out on the coast, like a camping platform um, out on the beach. And then when the waves come in, it's like seven, eight feet deep of water. And uh, I think it's a cool video. I don't suspect a lot of people watching the gold mining channel are, are going to enjoy it, but check it out if, if you're interested. Um, but there is two jet boat gold mining trips that I just need to edit. And so those are coming down the pipes here. It'll be snow on the ground by the time we see those, but they're ready and coming. And then I do plan on taking the boat out again, really late season here. So there's lots of gold mining coming up. It's just, I'm trying to do a video a week. So every Thursday is some sort of a video. My idea is at the end of 52 weeks, I will, you know, a year from now, I'll have done 52 more videos and I'll be 52 videos better at editing them. Oh my. So I have no idea what I'm looking at here, but there's a ton of brass shavings, which is interesting. Um, I'm going to bring the camera up here and I'll sort of show you what I'm looking at and then maybe I'll set it down with a closer view as I, as I pick everything else apart here. So we'll just set that down here and bring you up. This is the head. This basically has a seal going around it. There's, there's nothing wrong with that seal. And that was sitting like this. The intake comes in this hole. So it lets air into this chamber. And I believe this just doubles up. It's, it's a copy of this. So this comes out and you can see here, there's some sparkles on there. This intake is just covered in brass shavings all over here. And I think what happens is air goes down, possibly through this hole. There's a little, oh yeah, that's the reed valve. So it goes down through that hole and then comes up through this hole where there's another reed valve, which I believe is right here. And even on the upstroke, 
there's brass shavings here, which means brass was getting sucked into the piston, going through the piston, out the piston, and all the way over here. I'm just gonna take this snorkel out. I'm curious if any brass made it into this part of the piston before I pull the rest of this apart. So these tubes just connect side to side. We'll set those down there. Maybe I'll fast forward this in editing, but I'm just gonna loosen these bolts right here. All right, there's the last one. So brass came in here, went through the piston out here. Did any brass make it to the far side? Oh yes, yes it did. Look at all of that brass, that's crazy. Well actually, the intake side has more on both sides because it got sucked in here, straight across this tube into there and both, both of these pistons have just been sucking brass shavings. So this air compressor is supposed to survive 3000 hours before wear. I, I tore out the motor here to make it lighter and I don't think that wrecked it. I, I honestly think that what killed this compressor, and we'll see when we open it up, was this quick release fitting vibrating away against this brass fitting. That right there. You can actually see, um, hopefully this focuses in. Look at all those little round peen marks right there. That's where the, the little balls that go and lock in here, they were just hammering away at that, and dumping brass into these pistons. That is surprising. Okay, so this just comes up like that. Oh, that's interesting. But look at that. The piston is part of this. So there you can see the reed valve. So on, on this side, there's a little hole like that. And then that's the reed valve. So if I poke through that little hole, you can see the reed valve moving. And that's all that there is. That's the one way valve and there's little brass shavings around that. So it could be that the little brass shavings around that are letting some air seep through. This piston Honestly, the, the cylinder walls, they don't look terrible. I, and I don't know what you can see, but they feel, whoops, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> it feels to me like if this is the cylinder wall, it's still smooth. Um, so maybe, and that's, that's the piston, so we'll just rotate the crankshaft so the piston comes up. Huh, pushes this entire thing up over here. Little spider web growing in there. So there you go. That's the cylinder wall like that. And those little pistons just go up and down. So any, any machining error I have that has these, you know, moving in weird ways, I don't think did any damage. I honestly think it's just brass shavings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe and clean everything as best as I can. And especially this reed valve, as well as this reed valve. It's a little screw there. I'm gonna pull these reed valves apart, wipe them clean, because what I'm thinking is the surface between that reed valve and this surface, if there's little brass flakes and shavings in there, it's going to let air go backwards. Um, and so if this isn't spinning particularly quickly, it's just constantly going to be leaking down air through these reed valves. That's my best case scenario. Worst case scenario is that the seal between this and this piston right here is just totally shot, no longer making a seal. And... Uh, well, that's the end of this air compressor. So I'll clean things up and then I'll let you know if this thing will actually pressurize up that tank after that. So just pulling things apart, I've, I've wiped this down with a paper towel, a little WD-40. The reed valves didn't seem to have any 
actual brass shavings in them. But I'll, I'll still try it. But if we get right up close here, let me just show, shine this in the light the right way. There. You can really see there, there's some vertical lines going up and down these walls. There, that's a good shot. Look at all that scoring on the wall. That, for an oil-free air compressor, you don't have oil to fill those little gaps up. Um, and even if I oiled this and it worked temporarily, as soon as that oil gets blown out of here, that is a ruined cylinder wall. So I've taken what was otherwise a perfectly good compressor and just gobbled up a whole bunch of brass filings through it. And just scored it up real good. Huh. So, like I said, I'll put this together. I'll test it, see if it's any better. But I don't think that this is a repairable situation. So, in summary, we've pulled the thing apart. There was a ton of brass shavings that all got sucked in through the inlet due to the fact that I quick connect sitting here. I'm going to tighten everything up. We're going to see if this actually has any pressure or if those scored cylinder walls were basically the end of life of this compressor. Um, going forwards, I need to determine, is it worth carrying in an air compressor, even though it's lighter because I don't have a generator, just a tiny little 20 pound little engine air compressor, but I still have to carry in like 50, 60 pounds of lead I got to figure out these sorts of things along the way. If I go in without one, like one of these things, just a snorkel and a mask, I can cover a lot more ground. I'm going to go to a lot of creeks that don't have gold because I tend to do that. Um, and when I do find a creek with gold, then I can be like, oh, there's a really deep spot that I'd really like to see closer up. That's when I can, I can have one of these in there. So It'll probably be a situation of, if this doesn't work, put the project on hold temporarily. I will be back with this thing. There will be footage underwater gold mining. I've got the belt around here. I'm just gonna spin it with the drill. And then I've got it hooked up to this tank where we'll be able to see if the pressure goes up at all. And we'll just do our best to actually build some pressure in this tank here real quick. So let's see what happens. Probably just fast forward through this for editing purposes. Let's see, the engine runs counterclockwise. So go like that. I don't think the direction matters. And we'll give this a bit of spinning. So I can feel it sucking on my thumb when I put it there, but this pressure gauge Still reads zero. Now I'm sure there's some air in the tank. That was not a lot of air though. Um, so I'm thinking what happens is the same way with an engine. If you're doing a compression test on an engine, the faster the RPM, the higher pressure you get. So basically as that piston goes up the cylinder walls and it's you know leaking air, if you go that really slowly, a bunch of air leaks by. If you move a little bit quicker, then no air leaks by and, and you still get some compression. And so I'll bet you that if I, if I geared this off the engine to spin faster, I could still get some pressure underwater, but like, why? Come on guys. <laughs> One final idea, some three in one oil. If I pump that through, does the oil coating the cylinder walls fix my problem? It would not be a permanent solution because I'm not just gonna be dripping oil into this and I don't wanna be breathing that oil. But the theory in my head is that the cylinder walls are where the air is leaking. This oil could fix that temporarily. And so I wanna test that theory. I'm just using the chuck on the drill to spin this. So I'll just get it spinning up I'll squirt a bunch of this in here and we'll see if we can get any pressure on the gauge. After all that, I actually got some pressure. 
So it started building pressure. You could feel more resistance on this belt drive once it was all full of oil. And it's not leaking back. Yeah, so you can see there's a tiny bit of pressure there. Um, and then I can bleed that down. So I don't know if it's going to get much higher than that, but... So watch that needle, and it'll slowly climb when there's a ton of oil to fix all that scoring on the walls. Yeah, we've definitely built some pressure. So that's, that's the answer, guys. It's uh, brass shavings got sucked in and scored the cylinder walls. Um, it's unfortunate. But at least you guys got to learn from my mistake. I honestly think that this air compressor is an awesome solution. It's actually a nice, lightweight, quality air compressor that would work for a diving compressor running off an engine. But don't put a quick connect on the intake. That's, that's all I can say. Um, when I'm ready, I will make another one of these. Uh, whether I, I used, you know, a proper one that's designed to be driven by an engine or MacGyver, another cheap old air compressor. Uh, we'll see what happens when we get there. In the meantime, there's going to be a mix of videos coming out. So if you subscribe to the channel because you don't want to miss this, I do appreciate that. But you're, you're going to have a mixed bag of prospecting and not prospecting. But I can guarantee you there is a lot more gold mining on the way on this channel every Tuesday, no, every Thursday, you're gonna see uh, some content for as long as I can muster editing and making videos throughout the winter months. So until next time, cheers and thanks for watching. Thursday, see you then.